Well, good morning, guys. Three bold takes. And again, we're on this coaches series, if you will, ranking the top five coaches in each conference. We just did the Big 12. We're doing the Big 10 now. Um, and with the addition of some huge programs and names into the Big 10, I think this list is going to be very interesting to see where you guys put these coaches in the new uh, schools, the Oregons, the Washingtons, the USC's of the world. Um, into the Big Ten. Where do they fit in as far as coaches go? We're going to talk about it, but guys, let us know in the comments if you agree, disagree, who would you have? Um, are we dumb? Let us know because we like all comments, all criticism. Uh, Quinn, I want to pass it off to you. Who is the number one coach in the Big Ten heading into 2024? Uh, this was pretty easy for me, um, and I don't really understand how you'd have a hard time picking who number one is. Uh, I went Jim Harbaugh. I mean, three straight Big Ten championships, a national title to his name. That's something that really nobody else in the conference brings to the table. Uh, so it was pretty cut and dry for me. Jim Harbaugh is the number one coach in the Big Ten as of right now. Yeah, unless he gets hired on to an NFL team or something like that, if he sticks for 2024, yeah, cut and dry like Quinn said, it's Jim Harbaugh for me. Yeah, I agree. He's number one for me to assuming he sticks around. Uh, and if he does not, then uh, we may have to redo this list. Uh, but Chase, right back at you, number two. All right, this is where it gets fun. For me, I'm going to go ahead and pull the Pac-12 in here. I got Oregon and Dan landing it too. I think he is going to be structurally a better coach than a lot of these other guys on the list. Um, Lanning has shown that he's an all-around coach. He can recruit. He is good on both sides of the ball, offense and defense, uh, from what we've seen, a sound defense and then a, a blazing offense. The only problem with him is he has a couple of young coaching mistakes like we've seen in the Washington games, a couple of miscues from his own personnel that has lost him those games. He's young. He's going to continue growing. I don't even know if he's 40 yet. So as he grows, I think he's easily 20, 24 and beyond a top two or three coach. And I got him at two for me. Quinn? Yeah, my number two I thought was pretty cut and dry. I guess I was wrong. Uh, it's Ryan Day from Ohio State. Uh, you look around, who beats him? Michigan? That's it. Like, what a sin. Like, again, now granted, that could get you out of a job real quick in Columbus, Ohio. But if I'm strictly being asked who's the second best coach in the Big Ten, he's made it to the national title game. Uh, he took Georgia to the wire in the 2022 season. The same Georgia team that blew the brakes off TCU and blew the brakes off Florida State this year, he lost to them because his kicker missed a field goal. Like, that's how close we are to Ohio State being national champions under Ryan Day. Because let's be real, I don't think TCU is winning that national title game, whether they play Ohio State or Georgia. Uh, don't get me wrong, he's got to turn the tide around again on Michigan, but there's no one else in the conference other than, you know, Jim Harbaugh and Lincoln Riley who add up to the amount of stuff he's actually succeeded in winning. And we can project people if we want to, but as far as projecting Ryan Day and Ohio State, I still project them to be at the very tip top of the conference, and they've just got to get over Michigan. So he's my number two. Yeah, I've got Ryan Day at number two as well. I thought it was pretty cut and dry considering uh, you put a guy at number two that uh, hadn't made the playoffs um, as a head coach, um, and Ryan Day has multiple. Um, so, uh, yeah, pretty cut and dry there at number two. I thought for me and Quinn chase your, uh, no, uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's go to, uh, Quinn, uh, for number three. <laughs> so number three, and this is, I don't mean any disrespect on Dan Lanning. Dan Lanning is my number three. This is where I'm going to put some projecting into it. I see a strong future for Oregon recruiting classes keep going up. I think development's getting better. You look at where Oregon was in their week one game of 2022, getting like skull dragged by Georgia in front of everybody to where they are now. I, I definitely think Oregon's going to put themselves right there in the mix as one of the four best programs in the, in the big 10 for the next handful of years. And a lot of that has to do with Dan Lanning and the structure he has. Uh, I just couldn't put him above the success that we've actually seen inside of the Big Ten from Ryan Day and Harbaugh. But Dan Lanning is my number three, and it's mainly based on projection. All right, we're going to get a little crazy here, guys. I'm sorry. I just 
Uh, I've got to. For me, my three, I'm going Greg Schiano at Rutgers. Um, Rutgers <laughs> is another one for me, kind of like Kansas and Vandy. Um, Greg Schiano winning at Rutgers is the equivalent of Lance Leopold at Kansas or James Franklin at Vandy. It is so hard to win at Rutgers, and they have been just the absolute – bucket to kick in the big 10 for so 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 long and now he's got them in a spot to not only win games but compete with ohio state and ryan day compete with teams like michigan and jim harbaugh and so what he's done in the little time that he's been at rutgers i think he's going to transcend and also be maybe not it's i'm not choosing rutgers because i'm thinking they're going to win a big 10 championship or they're going to go to the playoffs i don't think that but I think what you're doing as Greg Schiano in the Scarlet Knights uniform is so underwhelming or overwhelming, my my apologies, compared to what Ohio State does with all the players that they get, that Michigan, all the players that they get. You don't get that at Rutgers. And so to do the job you're doing there, it's it's it, it makes me believe in the coaching duties there. I know that was a crazy one. As soon as y'all went Ryan Day at two, I knew this third one was not going to go well. Quinn? Oh, I so, just went at three. Oh, my bad, so, my bad. Fred, sorry. So you have Shiano. I just want to make sure I, I kind of have this right in my brain. You have Shiano above Ryan Day. You have Shiano above James Franklin. Oh, my gosh, yes. You, uh, okay. All right. We're just going to leave that there. We're just going to let you be there. Um, Ryan Day, if you're watching this, which I know you are, apologies uh, for Chase. Let him be your fuel uh, for next year. Anyways, at number three, uh, Quinn, I think you're cheating off me. I have Dan Lanning at number three as well. Um, this spot was going to be DeBoer uh, before he took the Alabama job simply because DeBoer beat Lanning twice last year and is undefeated against him. So, uh, take that for what it's worth, but I do have Lanning here at number three. I think what what him and Oregon are going to be able to do in the Big Ten is going to be interesting because, you know, let's not forget, and, you know, Oregon did go to Ohio State a couple of years ago and beat them pretty bad at home. Um, so to the physicality of the Pac-12 has definitely risen to the occasion over the past couple of years from what it used to be where it was just speed and agility and no physicality. That That has changed over the years. Um, and Dan Lanning has done that at Oregon tremendously. So I've got him at number three. Um, Chase, let's go back to you for four. Golly. Uh, just, all right. Wow. All right. All right. It's that time of day. Uh, yeah, we're going to go Ryan Day here. Guys, the reason I have Ryan Day at four is just I've seen the the – I just remember every time I think of Ryan Day, the quote that Jim Harbaugh had. The, this guy was born on third base and he was he had he's had plenty of recruits from the urban meyer era that he was successful with got to the playoffs with um but him recruiting and doing things on his own besides this past couple of weeks when he's gotten caleb downs and all this other stuff he just for the level of brand that ohio state is equated to alabama equated to um um to georgia to michigan like he has far underperformed than those other coaches, than the Nick Saban, than the Kirby Smart, than the um, um, Jim Harbaugh. He is no, I don't, I don't believe any coach in Ohio State history has lost it four straight times, in which Ryan Day had, or the game four straight times, which Ryan Day has the chance to do this year. I think Ryan Day has just had the opportunity to be extremely successful, have a couple of national championships under his belt, and he just has not finished the job, even though he's had amazing recruiting classes, amazing players on his team, amazing coordinators, but he can't get it done. So, and it's kind of entering, entering that chartered area of James Franklin and Penn State for me, where if you can't win this game, why are you at this school? You know, you got to find somebody that's going to finish that out. And for him to follow Urban Meyer, in my opinion, one of the best coaches in the past couple of decades, and not to have some of the same success that Meyer did, um, it's it's been underwhelming for me. Quinn? Uh, for me, at number four, I'm going to take a guy, and I have a feeling me and Freddie are about to be talking about cheating off each other again. Uh, I'm going to take a guy who was given a head coaching job at a program that was virtually dead, uh, in shambles, and really looked back on a past glory uh, and has made them ultra-competitive 
Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's never lost to Rutgers and Greg Schiano, so there's that. Um, he only really struggles with the Big Two. He's won a Big Ten title, and he consistently makes New Year's Six Bowl appearances and will probably continue to consistently make playoff appearances in the future, and that's James Franklin and Penn State. Um, again, project Dan Lanning ahead of him for the future, um, but I still just – I'm sorry, like Penn State's not, I don't, Penn State's not of the same caliber of Ohio State. And, and really, in my opinion, Ohio State's the only program in the Big Ten of that mega brand caliber. No offense to Michigan. I know you're dominating the Big Ten right now. But when I say mega brand caliber, in my opinion, there are only three teams who truly fit that. And that is Alabama. Ohio State and Oklahoma, where they are huge across the whole country and have been dominant for years, irregardless of coaching staffs, irregardless of decades. After that, you have like regional powerhouses, and that's where Penn State falls. They fall in the same group as Georgia uh, and Michigan, um, Oregon. And so for me, Penn State is right there. They haven't went over that hump yet, obviously, but. Uh, they are what what Franklin has done, not only in his time at Penn State, but also his time at Vanderbilt, makes him an insanely impressive coach to me. And it's a crime to not have him in your top five. So he's my number four. Yeah, give me James Franklin at Penn State. You know, I almost had him above Dan Lanning. Almost did. But I wanted to be a little bit realistic here. And he's got to show me something right now. With the new 12-team playoff, there is a chance he could do that. He could not make the, 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 Big, the Big Ten championship game. Although there's a good chance he could make the Big Ten championship game now and still lose to Ohio State or Michigan, one or the other, because there is no divisions anymore. And at which point they only play one of those next year. Um, so it is shaping up that, to be... Uh, James Franklin or, or bust this year, really. I, I mean, if you can't prove anything this year with the new structures, um, you got to sound the alarm. Uh, but he's at number four for me. Chase, I, I do want to mention something. Now, now, listen, I'm not the biggest Ryan Day fan either. I, I think he was born on third base just like you. But he's only lost three conference games in five years, right? Um if you want to go for he's lost eight total games in five years and urban Meyer quit coaching in 2018. So you want to go four years, 19, 20, 21, 22. That means 2023 was the first year where he would not have had a single player from urban Meyer's recruiting class. If you want to go that far, or maybe even in 2022, still the same records, 11 and two lost one game. Now you've got to start winning the big games though. You've got to start winning the bowl games. However, his dominance throughout the regular season cannot be overlooked because of that. Um, and that's why, you know, I think he should be um, up there. Uh, now, number five, I think this is going to be interesting, hopefully, for me and Quinn. Uh, Chase, I hope to God, um, you know, you have uh, some sort of sense to put James Franklin at number five or um, somebody of that caliber. You know what, Chase, let's just go ahead and get it out of the way. Who you got at five? I do have somebody. Of that caliber. Um, thinking looking at names, James Franklin, Lincoln Riley. No, nah, not me. I'm going Matt Rule in Nebraska. <laughs> this is the Matt Rule twist season. I think Matt Rule, he's one of the best turnaround of program coaches that there is. And what he did with Nebraska last year, I think they ended seven and five, if I'm not mistaken, Quinn, which Nebraska so. sh should not have done at all. And now I'm thinking that they're gonna jump probably win at least three more of those games. So they're going to end up, I think they have a 10 win season this year. Matt rule is one of the best college coaches at turning around a program. He did it at temple. He did it at Baylor. Um, I feel like I'm missing somebody. I'm not sure, but I think he's going to do it again at Nebraska. Wasn't a successful uh, professional coach. And the reason I don't have Lincoln Riley here, the reason I don't have James Franklin here is James Franklin for me has a standard beat one of the two. He can't do it and won't ever do it. And we've seen it come and go. I'm, I'm not a fan of James Franklin. I'm looking at 2024 and beyond. Who can I believe in that is going to uh, take, has a, a chance to be a top coach in the Big Ten and make his team perform? And I think Matt Rule is there. Lincoln Riley, I think Lincoln Riley is going to get embarrassed in the Big Ten. 
Uh, just that's just my my taking because he he couldn't make it in the Pac-12 and then also had some really good offensive talent and then he can't he can't get a defense together to save his life and that is going to kill you in the Big Ten. That's just my perspective and that's why I like Matt Rule at my five. Quinn, yeah, see, I'll start with this. Chase, you made the perfect uh, case for why James Franklin should be four and that is he can't beat one of the big two, but he beats everybody else. So why he's not in the top five, I don't know. Anyway. We'll move on to my number five. Uh, I, you know, at first I thought, do I put Kirk Ferentz here to show him some respect? Like, who else wins 10 games while also leading the country in the most punts? Um, that's pretty impressive. But, no, I couldn't put Ferentz there. So, ultimately I had to decide and stick with what I do, which is – proven success i had to go with a guy who's definitely like proven he can get there by taking his team to the college football playoff plain and simple that's why i went luke fickle with wisconsin uh i think the turnaround that we'll see at wisconsin under luke fickle will happen in time i look chase i get where you're coming from about uh with with nebraska I, i just haven't been a believer like i know he turned baylor around i know he turned temple around and maybe I'm just letting my pro football side get the better of me with Matt Rule and just not trusting in him after what I saw in Carolina. But I just, until I see it, I'm not going to believe it. And I am more, I, I believe that you can win easier at Wisconsin than I believe you can win at Nebraska. And that was ultimately, like I said, I really debated four names for this spot. And that was Fickle, uh, Rule, Riley, and Ferentz. And I settled on Luke Fickle at Wisconsin. When that's embarrassing, <clears throat> Luke Fickle was my number five as well, simply because of the, <laughs> the success that he had had at Cincinnati, and I cannot wait to see him long term at Wisconsin. Um, wow, you, you know, you, you know what? That that's uh, Chase. I applaud you for being different and and yeah. for going out on a limb, even though it's idiotic and not smart at all. You went out on a limb, and I like it. You had things to back it up. Guys, let us know down below. Are we ridiculous? Is Chase ridiculous uh, more than us? Yes. Uh, more than me and Quinn? Yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> it's um, yes. <laughs> but let us Griffin know down Chiano below. Chiano at three. <laughs> <laughs> but let us know down below, guys, and uh, look out for our other conferences. We're doing the SEC and ACC next. I will see you guys next time. Please subscribe. Stick around. Peace out.